So having the ability to upload files in any web application is a pretty crucial point and in this tutorial we're going to look at how you upload files with Node.js both to a private server and also to Amazon's S3 service. So let's take a look at how you get started uploading files in Node.js. So in order to start uploading files with Node.js we need to set up our project. So I'm going to create a blank package.json file by using the npm init command and then we're going to install some dependencies for our project. And we're going to be using Express to handle the content and also the processing of the form. And we're going to be using a package called Malta to actually handle the file upload process. Finally, I'm going to add the UUID module so that we can use this to generate unique IDs for our file names when we upload them to our server. So with those installed, let's actually start working on our script that will upload our files for us. So I'm just going to call this particular one server upload. And we need to import those dependencies that we just installed. So let's just require express. And we also need to grab multa as well. So require multa. And I'm also at this point going to grab the UUID module as well. Which has a particular function called v4 which we want to use to generate our IDs. And with those imported let's just set up express. So we'll create a new variable called app and initialize that with the express function. And I'm going to ask Express to use a particular folder for our static content, which will be the HTML form, which will be used to upload our files. So here I'm just telling it to use a folder called public. So let's create that now. And inside the public folder, we're just going to have an index page. And let's just put a bit of placeholder in there for the moment. And then back in our server upload script, all we need to do now is just get Express to listen on a particular port. And let's just test that's all working as expected. I'm going to run the server upload script with the Nodemon package, which if you haven't used this before, will just continually reload our JavaScript on any changes to the file. And you can install that globally with npm install dash g nodemon if you don't have that installed or alternatively you can just run our server upload script with the node command but if you do that you'll need to quit the process and reload the command every time you make a change to the file so let's go ahead and run our server upload script now with nodemon and there you can see it's running the file and the app is now listening so if we head over to localhost 3001 you can see our placeholder page is now being displayed but of course we want to have the ability for the user to upload files from here. So let's go ahead and in our index page, add in the necessary form controls to allow the user to upload some files. So all we need to do is create a simple HTML form tag and it needs to have an action, a place, a destination for it to go. So I'm going to say that's going to go to forward slash upload, which is going to be a route that we'll create in Express in just a moment. And the method for that is post because we're actually sending data across rather than just making a simple request to that route. And then we're going to set the encoding type to multipart form data. So that's the form created. We just need one input in there. And we'll set the type of that to file. And we're going to give it a name. Uh, we'll just call it avatar, for example. So this might be a case if the user is uploading an image to their profile, for example, in your account. And of course, they need a button to submit as well. So let's just create a button with a text submit. So now in our HTML file, we should refresh that and we can see the form has been created with the input box for choosing files. So if we now choose a file from the form, you can see we've got the ability to choose a file from our particular file system, and then we can submit the form from here. But as you can see, we haven't created the upload endpoint yet. So let's go ahead in our server upload script and create that. And just before we set the app listening, let's create a post endpoint, and we call that forward slash upload and then in our express setup we basically get a request and a response object and in our response object we're going to send some JSON back saying the status is okay so if we save that and try it again if we choose another file and then hit submit you can see we get response back of okay but that file hasn't actually gone anywhere. It hasn't been saved into our server or anything. So this is where we use the multi middleware to actually process the file upload. So just up here, before we initialize Express, I'm going to create a new variable called upload, and it's going to be a result of the 
call to the multi function. And this accepts an object as some options to determine how the upload is processed. But, and at its simplest, we can simply provide a property of dest for destination. And then we can just specify a folder where we want our files to be uploaded to. So let's create that in our folder structure here now. So it'll just be a folder called uploads. Now to make use of the multi middleware, we'll just actually, before we get our request and response objects back, pass in that upload variable that we've created. And there are a few functions that we can call on that, but I'm going to call the single function, so we're expecting a single upload. And we need to pass in the field name that we're expecting. So I'm here I'm going to pass in avatar, which if you remember in our index page, which was the name that we actually gave to our input form control. So now what should happen when we submit this form is the upload endpoint gets triggered and the middleware for Multa is used to actually process the file upload and it's going to be stored into a destination of uploads. So let's test that out. So let's first of all choose a file and then we'll hit submit. And you can see we've got a status of OK come back so there's no errors. And if we go back to our file structure and look in the uploads folder, you can see that there is actually a file that has been uploaded and you can see it's got a long unique identifier. So the original file name hasn't been preserved and we don't have the file extension as well. So more than likely you're going to want to at least preserve the file extension on the uploaded file so that you can reuse it in parts of your application. So what we need to do is configure Malta to actually customize the file name once it's uploaded. And we do that by creating another variable. So we'll call this one storage. And we'll reference the multi object again, and there's a function we can call on there called disk storage. And this function basically allows us to customize the way that multi stores the files. So the first thing we need to do is specify a destination for where the files are going to be saved. And this actually takes a function with a request object, the file that's been uploaded, and also a callback. And then with that callback that we get, we just pass back a value of null, because there's no errors. And then the folder where we want to upload it to, so again we'll say it's uploads. And then we specify in a second property called file name what we actually want the file name to be called. And again we get the request object, the file, and also the callback. So if we wanted to get the original name of the file that was uploaded, we can destructure that from the file object. So it's called original name. And then we simply call the callback with null for errors and then the original name. So when we initialize the multi on our upload variable, instead of passing in this object that has the pre-configured destination for our uploads, we can just use the property of storage to pass in our storage variable that we created. Or if we're using ES6 shorthand, we can just pass in storage like so. So if we save that and go and upload a file again, let's go back to the form. Let's choose photo one. And if I hit submit, you can see we've got status OK. And this time in our uploads folder, you can see photo one's been uploaded and it's preserved the file name, including the extension. So that's really useful, obviously, because now we can actually use those files within our application because we've got the .jpg extension on the file. But obviously, if you've got a multiple user system, you might get people uploading files with the same name. And unless you're separating them off into separate folders, those files are going to get overwritten. So one thing we could do is, if you remember, we imported the UUID module at the start of the setup of the tutorial. So we could, in some form, when we're generating our file name, use the UUID to create a unique string so for example, we could call UUID here first, and then have the original name appear at the end of the file name. So let's try that one more time. And let's load photo three this time. So you can see here in the file that's been uploaded, we've got a long unique identifier to uniquely identify the file, but we've also preserved the original file name onto the end so as to preserve the meaning of the file and also the file extension. So that's just one approach for saving file names, but obviously this callback here will give you the ability to customize the file name in any which way you like. So this process works great for uploading a single file, but if you go back to the form, you'll notice you're only able to upload one file or at least select one file. So if you try and hold down shift to select multiple files, for example, it won't work. So how do we actually upload multiple files? Well, there are two changes that we need to make. The first is back in our index.html file. So on the input for the file that we're creating, simply add the property multiple. And then if we reload the form, that will allow the browser to actually select multiple files. 
but that will actually cause a problem in our multi upload because it's only set to accept a single file. So back in our server upload, what we can actually do instead of uploading a single file here, we can just say upload an array of files. And what we could do then in our response as well, we could also say, put another property on the response saying uploaded is the number of request files dot length. So this will tell us how many files were actually uploaded. So if we save that and just test that out, let's clear out the uploads folder so that we've got nothing in there. So let's upload all three files in one go and then click Submit. So you can see the status is OK and we've uploaded three files. And you can see they're all appearing now in our uploads folder. So that's how you upload files to a private server with Node.js and Multa. It might not seem like we're doing anything too impressive because the files are obviously still on our local machine in this example. But obviously if you publish this application to a hosting provider like DigitalOcean, then the files would be uploaded to that server rather than running on your local computer. So now we've got an idea of how Multa works, let's have a look at how you would use it with Amazon S3 to achieve the same thing but to upload it to an S3 bucket. So let's stop our existing application from running and to create our S3 upload we need to install a couple of new dependencies. The first thing we need to install is the AWS SDK and the other thing is we need to get another package for Malta called Malta S3. So with those installed let's create another file called S3 upload. And I'm just going to copy and paste in all of the dependencies that we're going to need for this script. And the same as before, we're going to set up an express app here. So we'll just initialize that with the express function. And we're going to initialize a new S3 object. So we'll say a new AWS S3. And we're required to put in an API version in here as well, which as it stands is 2006.03.01. And then we're going to work on configuring Malta to actually use the S3 configuration rather than a private server. So we'll initialize Malta and we'll set that storage property like we did before. But this time we're going to use Malta S3, the Malta S3 package that we just imported. And it needs to have a copy of that S3 object that we just created here. So we set that as a property of S3. And then we specify the bucket that we want to upload it to. So we'll come on to that in just a second. And with S3 objects, they can have a metadata property. So we're just going to, in a similar way that we did with the file name before, we're just going to uh, create a function that handles that metadata for us. And it doesn't have to be anything too fancy. We can just set the field name to the file.field name. So that will be avatar in the current form that we've got. So I'll show you where this metadata appears in S3 in just a moment. But we also need to specify a key property. And this is where we set the file name for the actual file that's been uploaded. So this time what I'm going to do is actually get the extension of the file name that's been uploaded. So I'll do that with the path library that I've imported. And we'll say get the extension name of the file dot original name. And then when we call back to actually generate the file name, what I'll do is generate a new UUID. So that'll be our unique identifier. And then just pass in the extension name. So just to review what we've done here, we've created a new S3 object, which will allow us to interface with the S3 service. And then we've created a new customized version of Malta that uses the Malta S3 library. And we've specified the bucket that we're going to be uploading to. And then we've also created some metadata for the items that we're going to be uploading. And this will just set a property of field name, which will be equal to avatar based off of our form that we're uploading with. And then we've customized the file name that is being saved, which will basically just be a long UUID with the file extension on the end, so the file can still be useful. So before we go ahead and set this up, we need to get the rest of our Express application configured. So we'll do exactly the same thing that we did before. We'll say app.use express.static. And um, we'll point that to the public folder. So we can reuse the existing form that we had as before. And then we need to set up the post endpoint, which was on upload. And then we'll use that multi configuration that we've created and pass in an array. And it will have a property of avatar for the field name. And then we'll have in our express endpoint, the request and response object. And the same thing that we did before, we're just going to return some JSON with a status of okay. 
and we'll also mention how many files were uploaded. So the last thing to do then is just set the Express app listening. So we'll just say listening on port 3001 again. And that's pretty much all we need to do to upload to S3. However, there's a bit of configuration that we need to do because we need to specify an existing bucket that actually exists in S3. And we also need to provide the script with the necessary S3 credentials to actually make a successful upload. So the credentials that we actually need are basically the AWS Access Key ID and also the AWS Secret Access Key. So let's head on over to the AWS console and then we'll look at how to get those credentials and also how to create a new bucket. So over in the AWS console, if you head over to the S3 section, uh, you can see a list of all the buckets that you've got created. So for this example, let's create a new one. I'll just call it JDC Test Upload. And we'll just skip all the configuration. We just need to create the bucket for now. And you'll see that creates this bucket here, which if we have a look in it, is currently empty. But now we've got the bucket created, we can go back to our code and actually specify the bucket name here. So JDC test upload. And the last thing we need to do is to get those AWS credentials so that our script can actually access our account successfully. So what we need to do for that is if we go over to our, the IAM section, if you haven't got an existing user set up, you'll need to create one. I've got one called James here. And you can see I've got some policies already set up, including Amazon Access. If your user doesn't have that policy, you'll need to add that for them. But if we head over to the security credentials, you can see we've got an access key set up already here, but I'm going to create a new one just to demonstrate how you would do it for yourself. So let's create a new access key. And you can see here is the access key ID, and we've also got the secret access key here. You can download these to make it easier, but just for example here, I'm just going to copy them into our code. And what I'm actually going to do is set these as environment variables on the terminal. And the reason for this is you don't really want to be storing any particularly sensitive information like access keys into your actual code, even if it's in a protected file or anything like that. So the other thing we need to get is the secret access key. And let's just copy that from here and paste it onto the terminal. So by doing this export process, it will make those keys available as environment variables. And the Amazon SDK, when it creates that S3 object, it will be able to make use of those access keys and therefore it will be able to actually upload our files for us. So let's run the S3 upload script now. And that's set up and the app is listening. So let's go back to our HTML form. Let's just go back here. And we've got the three files chosen, but let's make sure that they're the same ones. And so if we submit that now, you can see this process takes a little bit longer because we're actually uploading to S3 instead of to our local file system. But everything looks good. We've got a status of OK and three are uploaded. And if we go back to our S3 console, if we go and find the bucket that we just created, you can see we've got those three files in there and they've all got unique UUIDs and they've got the file extension on there as well. So that customization that we've made in Malta has taken effect and we've been able to customize the way the files are uploaded. So with these files uploaded, you can make use of them in your application or in other parts of the Amazon infrastructure. And just to demonstrate the metadata property that we set in the customization of Malta is found here. So if you just go to the Properties tab and then click on Metadata here, so you can see there's some metadata attached. And you can see that there's a specific field that's been added of field name, which we customized, and we set it to the value of Avatar, which again is the name that we've given to the input control on our original HTML form. So that's pretty much it. That's two ways that you can upload files using Node.js, either using a private server, as in our first example, or using Amazon's S3 service. So now you've seen how to upload files, you can add this feature to your application. So if your users do need to upload images or documents, you can follow this process and add an upload form, and then you'll have all of those files to be used within your application. So that's it for this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorials, and I'll see you next time.